Good morning. It is literally the AM right now as I'm recording this. TFG Webmaster here. Welcome back to my Fighters Gen vlog series. This is vlog number five. Man, already at number five. I'll give you a Heihachi palm strike. Sword yeah. Whoa. What's up, Jen? So this is obviously the Tekken edition of my top 10 fighting games. If you are familiar with my channel or you've ever read a Tekken review on FightersGeneration.com, this was probably, how do you say, predictable. Shoutouts to Geese Howard. Possible future guest character in Tekken 7 Season 2? Maybe? I'd approve. I'd honestly rather have Terry Bogard if we're gonna do Tekken versus Capcom versus SNK, which would be awesome, but I'd approve. Get out of here, geese. This is a Tekken video. I have been playing Tekken since Tekken 1 at the arcade. Uh, I loved Virtua Fighter, uh, Virtua Fighter 2 especially, and when Tekken came out, it was such a weird, different game. The, the graphics weren't pretty, but the characters were intriguing. Uh, they weren't afraid to be themselves, but also take you know, inspirations from existing characters. And they put a different spin on you know, their style of you know, fighting, martial arts. One of the main things that drew me in to the Tekken series originally, besides the authentic martial arts, was how hard the moves hit and how painful you know, they looked. I never got tired of watching the replays in Tekken. And something about Tekken's animation has always been special. Uh, and no other fighting game gives you that oomph. Like that move really connected, it really hurt. And that element that I first fell in love with has only gotten better with every sequel, along with many other things that I will talk about later in this video. Um, I'd like to take you back to 1994. Uh, that was when I first played Tekken 1 at the arcade. I was 11 years old. Uh, then in 1995, uh, my friends on the block, my best friends, two of my best friends, they were brothers, uh, they were the first to get PlayStation 1 in the neighborhood. And you know, I would go over to their house, you know, play the original PS1 lineup. I convinced them to get Tekken 1. And a year later, convinced them to get Tekken 2. That was a given. You know, I pretty much got them into Tekken. We played all the time. So back in the day, I was late getting a PS1. I was more of a Nintendo kid. I had all the Nintendo systems. So my best friends would come to my house to play all the Nintendo games and I would go to their house to play all the PS1 games. Uh, and a quick side story, you guys will appreciate this. Um, my best friends, they came from a really strict family, so they had to work like for their allowance, hardcore. Uh, they had to earn like every game they would buy. Um, and turns out, they never decided to buy a memory card. And basically that means every time we would play Tekken 1 and Tekken 2, we would have to unlock all the characters. Every time. <laughs> I think they finally got a memory card when Tekken 3 came out. And I finally got a PS1. But before that, you know, one of us would just sit down and unlock all the characters in arcade mode while the rest of us would go outside, play something else. And then we'd come back and be like, oh, awesome, you unlocked Anna, Lee, Armor King, <laughs> like okay, we'll play now. Um, but think about that. You know, that's how I got my original experience. Originally, fell in love with Tekken and playing it that much. You know, I remember we had a strategy guide. We we're looking up uh, the ten hit combos. We we're like, oh, look, at, I can do this ten hit combo now, which was like so difficult back then. You know, people rarely talk about this, but it's something to appreciate. You know, growing up with these characters, these move commands that are still intact, still done the same way in the newest Tekken games. Uh, and it says something about Tekken that it never has to change that much. 
you know, the layout, the button layout is still left punch, right punch, left kick, right kick, one button per limb. It's still a perfect system. And us Tekken players who've been playing it for as long as we have, we don't want that to change. It's not going to change. It's almost a requirement to be a dedicated player to notice all of the changes in every Tekken sequel. You know, passerbys will just look at Tekken and say, oh wow, that looks the same. But do they know the hundreds of moves per character? The hundreds of new animations in every sequel? Hundreds of new moves that they add? You know, it's something unique and special about Tekken, you know, being a legacy game. So as of this year, I have been playing Tekken for 20 three years and I still love Tekken and I'm sure many of you have been playing uh, Tekken for that long and if so definitely leave a comment uh, tell me your history with the series I'd love to read that and one final note that you might find interesting is Tekken helped keep me inspired as a kid to stay interested in martial arts which I started karate when I was eight um, Street Fighter 1, Ryu, and Ken, Street Fighter 2 uh, were the original guys that inspired me to do karate along with you know, Bruce Lee and along with my dad urging me to do karate because he did when he was younger. Um, so those have been two constants in my life, my whole life. Fighting games and martial arts. Been doing martial arts 27 years, still part of a dojo and I teach now which is, uh, I'm very lucky to do that, honored to still do that. Um, and that's something I want to talk about in a future vlog, the connection of Tekken and real life martial arts. There's a lot I can elaborate on there. So look forward to that. Uh, and if you are a real life martial artist who loves Tekken, which would make sense for a lot of reasons, uh, drop a comment. You know, I'd love to hear your story. After I reveal number seven on my top ten fighting games, I will be giving you number six as well in this very video. So we have a lot to cover. Uh, let us enjoy the intro, part of the intro, of the first title. In winter 2004, early 05, when the Street Fighter series went quiet for a while, uh, SNK wasn't doing anything that extraordinary at the time. Midway was releasing console-only Mortal Kombat games, which were meh, in my opinion. Namco 
at the time was holding it down at the arcade scene with Tekken 5. And if you did not experience Tekken 5 at the arcades with an active community and player base, you quite possibly missed out on the pinnacle of the arcade fighting game. So why was Tekken 5 so great? Uh, before we talk about the game itself, the arcade cabinet was next gen. It looked cool, uh, it was super sleek and slim, and it was innovative. It brought all these new features that had never before been seen in an arcade. Uh, the player card customized system, take your physical card that you get, put it in to the machine, saves all your stats, win-loss ratio, your rank, and of course you can uh, customize your character however you want, and it created such a unique environment at the arcade. You know, some new player walks up and puts their card in, like, oh, you got a card too, huh? Yeah, let's see what you can do. You got information about them right on the screen. You could tell if they're a serious player or not. And you also met a lot of cool people that way. You remembered, you know, their names on their their cards, you know. It was a brand new experience at the arcade. And also, bring your DualShock 2. Plug it in to the arcade machine. Sit back, relax, you know. That was amazing. Everyone I knew used the, their DualShock 2 with the machine. You know, if the arcade stick on the cabinet broke or something, or one button got stuck, no worries. You got your, your own controller. Bring your own controller. Uh, you, know, you could bring like a folding chair. You had chairs at the arcade. It was a totally different kind of arcade experience. And I have to say, it was the best time that I ever had playing an arcade game. Uh, I was lucky enough to be near at least three or four local arcades with Tekken 5 with a great community of players. We had a great local scene for Tekken 5. Uh, everyone knew each other. Regular tournaments we would drive out to the different arcade spots and see everyone there. Uh, shout outs to some of my old rivals in Tekken, Ron Kazama, uh, met him playing Tekken 5 of course, uh, Jet 3000, Judo Darkfist, uh, JKD Cobra, Tony V, other Tony, uh, Cali Caledonia was a female Tekken player, used to throw it down with Lily, um, Isaac, all you guys. Um, I used to drive an hour to an arcade in Clearwater Beach, Florida called Beach Game Land. It was an hour drive there, hour drive back to my house, and some weekends I would make that drive twice, all just to play Tekken 5 BR with these guys. So that arcade, Beach Game Land, was such a cool spot, it was right on the beach. Uh, on the weekends we'd have 10, 15 people around that Tekken 5 DR machine. I uh, would have chairs set up, so everyone would just be leaning back, you know, someone would have a streak going on their uh, DualShock 2, real chill environment. Uh, every weekend there'd be some new guy that would come up and be like, Bro, man, that's so cool, I didn't know you could connect your PlayStation controller to the machine. He'd be like, yeah, man, like, welcome to last year. <laughs> it was such a cool spot. Um, and the machines didn't take quarters or cards, but there were these plastic keys, and that's how you put your credits in. Um, so one weekend, after a few matches, uh, everyone was kind of talking, and like, hey man, my key ran out really fast. I'm like, mine too, what's going on? So we talked to some guy that worked there, and he's like, yeah, the arcade manager raised it to a dollar. And we're like, what? Whoa, man, like, we made this game popular because we're the group that comes here every weekend. You can't be raising the price on us. So we talked to the manager, and they actually lowered it for us. Because, man, I'm driving an hour. I can't be popping a dollar every time in that machine. Uh, so that was funny. All right, let's talk about the game itself. Uh, Tekken 5 released on PS2 in 2005, February. 2005 uh, and in my opinion there was no other console fighting game that came close that even came close to the amount of content that was in the ps2 version 
Um, you know, in my opinion, it was the best best fighting game out at the time. The character endings were hilarious. You know, very very well made. Um, the character prologue, epilogue, artwork, character storylines, all very very well done in Tekken 5. Um, customization mode was excellent. You know, the best fighting game customization mode to date. Up until at least October 2005, releasing later that year, uh, Namco's own Soul Calibur 3. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, Tekken 5 and Soul Calibur 3 were the best you know, fighting games out at the time in terms of raw content, raw quality. Um, but what do I know? I've only played every fighting game since 1985, but that's just my opinion. In terms of gameplay, uh, Tekken 5 didn't reinvent the wheel. In Tekken 4 they experimented with a lot of new things like uh, random objects on the stage, slanted floors, and walls for the first time in the series. But Tekken 5 was more of a return to the series roots. Uh, they brought back infinite stages and they kept the wall game in from Tekken 4 and expanded on it, uh, made better wall combos, things like that. I really enjoyed that in Tekken 5. I still love doing uh, wall combos. And of course the Dark Resurrection update added uh, new moves for all characters. Characters like Bayek and Jack got brand new animations um, and better combos also. And speaking of combos, uh, the only fathomable flaw I can think of in Tekken 5 were some very nasty, devastating uh, wall carry combos. Here's Lee's trademark wall carry right here. Uh, if you were a serious player, this probably didn't bother you. Uh, but if you're a beginner, it's uh, you know, pretty intimidating seeing juggles like that. Uh, you know, every character had that long-reaching jab and you could just kind of keep that juggle going for six, seven hits. And it was nasty damage too, you know, really intimidating for new players. And the combo variety, the max damage combos, just they didn't look that cool, you know, honestly. And this was something that was remedied in Tekken 6 and Tekken Tag 2 with much better looking combos, more options for starting combos, and of course, a better combo variety which is an important part of the gameplay at a high level. You don't just want to do the same combo over and over and over again, get predictable that way. And how you leave your opponent after a combo is an important part of strategy. But of course, at the time, the Tekken 5's characters and their move lists were the biggest out of any fighting game characters to date and had the most dynamic playstyles by far. All right, to wrap this up, like those presents on the infamous pink stage, Dark Resurrection released on console in March 2007 as a PS3 exclusive and in full 1080p, one of the first ever fighting games in 1080p, if not the first. Um, looked amazing, even in 720p. I remember I had a first generation Samsung 720p TV and I was like, oh, I gotta upgrade now just for Tekken. No. Five months after the PS3 release, they added the online update, making it the first ever Tekken game online, first ever Namco fighting game online, which came at a perfect time for me in my area because arcades were really starting to die out and the ones that were alive were not getting the newest games. So I was actually happy to see the fighting genre you know, officially going online, at least attempting it. And, uh, you know, DR Online was playable. It definitely had its netcode issues, its disconnect issues, but it was a pioneer, you know, one of the first ever online fighting games. And I learned a lot by playing online, for sure, seeing different play styles. And I kept in contact with some of my arcade buddies, you know, we still played, kept the scene alive until uh, Tekken 6. Oh, and one more thing. I'm sorry, I have to do this. But uh, shoutouts to my original top 10 rank in Tekken 5 DR Online. Tekken 7 Top 10 Online Warriors, we coming for you! So Tekken 5 was a revolutionary step in the series history, one of the best for sure. But it's important to note that all of the best features of Tekken 5 returned in the later sequels. 
on that note, before I get to number six on my top ten, I have to give an honorable mention to another title which will disconfirm it from my top ten. And that title is... So the main reason Tekken 5 made it on my top 10 and Tekken 6 did not was because there was no arcade scene for it in North America. And that was because the arcade cabinet was so expensive. Now my numbers might be off, but I think it was somewhere between 10 or $15,000 for a new Tekken 6 machine. One. And by then, by 2007, 2008, arcades in America were either dead or they could not afford that much for a new fighting game. And I think because us overseas players had to wait so long for Tekken 6 to come out on console, a lot of players, especially casual players, got their hopes up and really wanted, to be, wanted Tekken 6 to be something revolutionary when it was just a significant update for the players. And I'll get to that in a bit. But the presentation of Tekken 6 on console wasn't great. It did not live up to Tekken 5 in terms of the artwork um, and the endings. And also the intro. The console version intro was pretty sleepy. This is the arcade version intro. This intro is epic. I love this intro. Um, so I think Bandai Namco could have done a few things better with the console version's presentation for casual players and new players. But for actual Tekken players, Tekken 6 was great. I think Tekken 6 is a better game than Tekken 5 ER, and I'll tell you why. First of all, as someone who used 7 or 8 characters confidently in Tekken 6, nothing in me wanted to go back and play the Tekken 5 version of those characters, which just seemed kind of boring compared to their updated Tekken 6 versions and the updates to the characters were really really smart um, new stance transitions, tons of new animations, new moves also it's a subtle improvement but Tekken 6 introduced more intuitive move commands there were some changes to the move list to make them feel more natural when learning a character so for example let's say you forgot the move command but you know your character moves down in this direction uppercuts with his left hand and then does a kick with his right leg. Hmm, is the move command down forward, left punch, and right kick? Yep, that's the move command. Another example, you know, Steve Fox's special back step into a uh, flicker stance. Back in two kicks, because he moves both feet. No punches are thrown, punch buttons aren't used. The move commands are designed to feel how they would feel to throw those techniques in real life. Now, that idea has always been part of Tekken, but I think it really came into fruition, especially starting with Tekken 6. I also think Tekken 6 was a very underrated game in terms of graphics, especially how good the character models looked up close. I think Namco's biggest mistake was having the motion blur as the default setting, because by turning that off, the resolution actually got quite a bit sharper. And as you can see by the character models and the musculature in the lighting, it was actually very ahead of its time. And, you know, even fighting games within the last five years don't quite match up the level of detail that Tekken 6 had for its characters. And of course the new uh, hit effects, rage effects were pretty cool. And as you can see, I had a lot of fun with Tekken 6's customization mode. Uh, you can finally rotate the camera around your character. Tons of options, way more than Tekken 5. Some would even say Tekken 6's customization was better than Tag 2's. I would partly agree with that. Uh, Tekken 6 also introduced item moves. Had to know the special command to get those to work, but some were pretty cool. Uh, not a big effect on gameplay at all, but sometimes you could surprise your opponent if they weren't expecting it. Sorry, Nancy. This isn't going to match with the gameplay this time, but the final aesthetic thing about Tekken 6 I just want to bring up real quick is the Scenario Campaign Mode, which was a new take on Tekken Force Mode from Tekken 3 and Tekken 4. 
And it was presented as the game's main story mode, and I think that's probably where it went wrong, because at its core, it was a solid bonus mode for a fighting game. Uh, you know, 40 playable characters, each with 100 or more moves, and it was a 3D beat-em-up game. You know, that's pretty unique. Where else are you going to find that? Um, so if you like beat-em-ups, uh, it was actually pretty fun. It was playable. But the story was trash, bro. You know what, Ken? Maybe the storyline wasn't all that great, but it was way more than what Capcom and other fighting game companies were doing for bonus modes in their fighting games. Stupid ass kids. Everybody knows you play games like Double Dragon and Streets of Rage 2 and Fighting Force for their epic storylines, right? You know what else I liked about Scenario Campaign? It didn't take itself too seriously and you actually had to know how to play Tekken in order to get the most out of it. Yeah, you can't just sit there and mash one button and make cool shit happen like in most action games back then. You actually had to know how to use your character. <laughs> Imagine that. You know what other game you had to know how to play in order to get anything out of? Tekken 6. Tekken 6 gave you so much freedom within your combos. You could put bound at the beginning of your combo or at the end, and it was up to you, the player, to be creative with your own playstyle and come up with your own combos, literally. It was not a cookie cutter game. You could have some very different playstyles for every character in this game, and that's why it lasted competitively for over four years, overseas and in the States, and even had its own TV show in Korea and Japan, uh, just for Tekken 6, which continued for Tekken Tag 2 as well. Also worth mentioning, especially in this day and age of fighting games, is that Namco never dumbed down their characters. They only made characters better. They gave them more moves, longer combos, more damaging combos, better options. They only made characters more dangerous in the sequels. Even Roger Jr. could whoop your ass in Tekken 6 if you were not careful. He had way better combos in Tekken 6 than he did in Tekken 5. It's a more balanced game that way. The freedom and creativity Tekken 6 provided to the player enabled me to not only enjoy the game for four years and also inspired me to enter a ton of tournaments. I actually won CEO 2010 before it was big, but it still counts. Um, not only that, but it inspired me to start creating content and you quite possibly know me from my Steve Fox Epic Dodges video, which is over a half a million views now. Uh, my Feng Wei compilation, my Lars compilation. Those all started with Tekken 6. I have Tekken 6 to thank for creating those videos. And not to pat myself on the back too much here, but I'm very humbled and happy to know that I got a lot of new players interested in Tekken through those videos. Uh, you can check out the comment section for those videos for yourself and scroll down and see a lot of comments like that, many of which I replied to. And that was my original goal with creating those Tekken compilation videos, exposing some of the deeper aspects of Tekken that most people don't know about. So again, I have Tekken 6 to thank for starting off my career as being a content creator, I guess you could say. And something else that came with the popularity of those videos, I was receiving invites on PSN to play Tekken 6 two to even three years after Tekken Tag Tournament 2 came out. And I turned down nearly every single one of them. Why did I turn down every single one of them? See what I did? You didn't see it. You didn't see it coming. You didn't see it coming. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm just going to give you the bullet points of why I loved this game for four and a half years um, and never went back. We don't go backwards to Tekken 6. We go forwards, man. Um, so I'm going to make this quick, you know. If Tekken 6 was algebra in terms of combo creation and playstyle freedom, Tag 2 was calculus. Not in terms of difficulty, in terms of 
open-endedness and possibilities. If you used a lot of characters, Tag 2 was a combo sandbox of fun and destruction and salt, especially salt for some. Um, as someone who put four and a half years into this game, with every year that I played it, I picked up new characters and new teams, which kept the game fresh. I learned new combos with my old teams. Uh, the Ogres, for example, I just picked them up last year, and I had so much fun over this past year just using uh, Team Ogres. However, Tag 2 was a hard pill to swallow for some casual players, and I can actually understand that. It was a very unforgiving game. You, know, you either knew your max damage combos, you had your team down, or you were dead. You know, get out, play something easier. There were no easy comeback mechanics, nothing dumbed down. You know, once again, all the characters were stronger than Tekken 6. Um, so you either had your shit together or you were going to be salty, most likely, or quit the game early. And if you quit the game, you missed out on some really great gameplay possibilities, cool moments that can only happen in a game like this. And yes, you know, there were some very nasty exploits, uh, overpowered teams, gimmicks. Some gimmicks actually work in Tag 2. Um, but this reminds me of another game, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. There were gimmicks in MVC 2 for sure, overpowered teams. But it's the possibilities that the game provides you, the uniqueness of the game, this unlimited freedom of combos that you have to respect, admire, love, love to hate, whatever it is. Is Tag 2 a better game than Tag 1? Absolutely, if you ask me. Uh, maybe some casual players don't know this, but in Tag 1, there were some 2-hit combos and 3-hit combos that took off half-life, and they were easy. As easy as throwing one Hadouken. In Tag 2, to take off that much life in this game, you have to do a high execution, difficult combo which you could possibly drop. Uh, so which is better, the more complex combo or the simple combo to take off that much life? Uh, I go with the more complex system. So I definitely had my fun creating ridiculous combos, new teams, new customizations up until the very end of Tag 2's lifespan. Uh, there'll be some things I'll actually miss about Tag 2. Some of the franticness, randomness of the gameplay, having 2 versus 2. But I am more than ready to return to a more honest, stand-up, 1 versus 1 game of Tekken in Tekken 7. Uh, that said, I am officially retired from Tag 2. No more PS3 invites, please. Taking the PS3 out back. It's all going to be PS4 and Tekken 7 from here on out. Uh, see you guys there. Whew. That's it, guys. Longest vlog ever. <laughs> A lot of my future vlogs won't be this long or complex. Obviously, I worked really hard on this video. A lot of editing and stuff. So, I appreciate your likes, comments, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for taking this nostalgia trip with me through the entire PS3 era of Tekken games. It is the end of an era, but I think this is the best time to be a Tekken player. Tekken 7 is going to be great, there's no doubt about that. We're going to play Tekken 7 for the next four years until Tekken Cross Street Fighter, Namco vs. Capcom, whatever they decide to call that game. Before I go, I would like to thank some recent donators on Twitch. Check me out on Twitch if you haven't. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash fighters space gen. Bullet Club. Four, 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 four. Thanks, Mouth. As always, always fun talking to you. Um, glad you enjoyed the unboxing video. We'll be doing more uh, live unboxing videos on Twitch. Don't miss it. Also, gotta thank Neon Musket. Let me be the blesser of all souls. 
Neon actually sent in $7.77 twice. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Uh, these are my lucky numbers this year. It's 2017, Tekken 7 coming out. And it's the seven year anniversary for me and my fiance. So uh, thanks for doing that, man. Really cool of you. Speaking of my fiance, you guys are gonna get to meet her in the next Fighters Gen vlog. We're gonna be unboxing the collector's edition of Tekken 7, seven year anniversary present from her. Do that! So it'll be a lot of fun. I hope you guys tune in for that one. As for my top 10 fighting games countdown, we are officially halfway through. Just five more games to reveal. Uh, the next two vlogs though will be Tekken 7 themed. But after that, I will return to my top 10. So there's a lot to look forward to on the channel. Stay tuned for more. Be seeing all of you in Tekken 7. Do that! But the story was trash, bro. You know what, Ken? Maybe the story of Scenario Campaign wasn't all that great. <laughs> Fuck. Do that!